Hi, and welcome to the Green with Tiffany podcast. I'm your host, Tiffany Page. And in this show, we'll explore topics of sustainable living, all aspects of health and wellness of people and planet, and how we're all interconnected. Join us on this journey to live better and more sustainably by improving our health, our families, and the world with the choices that we make. Hi, and welcome to the Green with Tiffany Choose to Care podcast. I am excited to talk about food waste today. I know, not a very sexy subject, but very necessary. And if you're here in California, you really need to know about this because this is being mandated. So if you're not familiar with what has been passed, I'm going to let you in on a little bit of the information that you might need to know how to go about doing composting of our food scraps. That's right. I'm actually pretty excited about it. So I'm your host, Tiffany Page, and it is called SB 1383. So that is our Senate Bill 1383 state organics law. So I'm here in Los Angeles. And so I'll be speaking a little bit more towards Los Angeles since that's that's where I am. But it is a California statewide bill. So if you need to know about more in your city, you can either maybe contact some of the information I'll put in the show notes. Or if you just pop on Google and just find out, you know, food scrap collection, wherever you are, Glendale, you know. So LA Sanitation and Environment of the city of Los Angeles um, has this recycling program with Organics LA. And so it's been mandated that we reduce the amount of compost materials that we usually dispose in our landfills. And it actually creates havoc on our landfills. I mean, they're very full as it is. But when you have these compostable materials like food scraps and paper products that break down in a landfill, they actually produce methane. And so that's one of the most potent greenhouse gases uh, in Earth's atmosphere. So now we're able to use it for the positive and they're hoping to really make a change of up to 75% of those materials that are usually going to landfills by 2025. So that's huge. And I'm very excited about that. And so now we have to do it. And now it'll be processed into compost at a commercial facility, and it can be used for farmers and really help with the soil. So I'm excited about that. So I was living in Beverly Hills, and we had three bins originally. We had the trash bin, the recycling bin, the green waste bin. And then one day they went away and we only had one bin. And I thought, well, how does that work? How are we going to recover the materials that can be reused if if they're all in one bin? You've got your broken glass, your trash, your dog poop, your yard trimmings. I mean, it just never made sense to me. And so I would take out my recyclables, separate them. I had my own separation bins, separating bins, and would take them to the recycling center myself. This That center was in Santa Monica, and they'd been there for 30 years and unfortunately lost their lease, which of course that is prime real estate location now in Santa Monica. So their sister company uh, is in Glendale and I would go there when my actually put had her vet appointment because the vet was in Glendale. So I'd just make it a one-stop shop, take my recyclables. And composting was a little harder with the shared space, although I tried to do it as I could and would take it to a nonprofit that I was part of um, in a in a garden community and take it there or anyone who wanted my compost, I would take it. It was good compost, had all organic materials. And, you know, with a home compost, it's really just going to be fruits and vegetables and scraps like that or coffee grinds or coffee filters, that kind of thing. And so when I came to Los Angeles County and had the three bins again, I saw that on the green bin that you could put your fruits and vegetables in. Or so I thought I was doing it. And what I realized it was initially for fruits and vegetables that are in the yard. So if you have a lemon tree and a lemon falls off or an avocado tree and it drops and a squirrel eats half of it, like those kind of fruits and vegetables could go into your green bin. And when I discovered that, I was talking to a local friend farmer and he said, well, I mean, who's checking that? Who's going to know? 
I would just keep putting them in. I mean, I had good, it was good stuff, good organics, right? So I just kept putting it in, but come to find out that this bill went into place January 1st, 2022. So it was available to you to be putting all your food scraps in the green bin all this time. So if you have a green bin, everything stays the same as far as when they pick it up on the same schedule and they'll take it to a compost facility. So I guess I was doing it right all along. And now they've added some other items that you can add to it, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And I question just a little bit. So talking about the differences between your backyard compost, say, and the more commercial composting. So one of the things they said you could compost now is meat products, which I think is a little questionable. So this went into place January 1st, 2022. So yes, maybe because we're in the middle of a pandemic, it really wasn't promoted as much. But what I found out is they're offering a food waste pail to residents. So each county is going to have their different setup for it. So it's pretty easy to use. I wanted to do it to see how easy it was so I could share that with you. So there's a website, which I'll put in the show notes. You can put your zip code in. It'll show you the local facility that you can go to pick up your complimentary uh, pail. So I did that. I went yesterday and it was pretty easy. And they just cross off your name and your address and they give you a pail. And so I guess the issue with it was they were a little bit backordered and they couldn't really offer it to the community. And so I think that's what kind of held this up a little bit, but now it's in place. And like I said, it is actually being mandated. So if you are not familiar with this, there is from the beginning of 2024, it says those who contaminate their green waste with the wrong items could be slapped with fines of up to $500. So that's a pretty big deal. So that's why I want to really educate people to let them understand what they need or don't need to be putting in that green bin. So when I went to go pick up the pail, I was talking to the gentleman there and I was mentioning how it's a bit of a learning curve for people. And I'm surprised that they're actually allowing people to put meat and fish into the compost because I think that there's a lot of room for error with that. And he agreed. And I thought maybe we should have just started with baby steps, you know, maybe just start with fruits and vegetables, right? Get people familiar with that. And while I was there, a woman came in and she asked if she could put her little Keurig pods, those little coffee pods in there. They're plastic, no plastics, big N-O on the plastics. So, you know, I'm sure he gets asked questions like that all the time and I'm happy there's answers for them, but I just feel there's uh, going to be some challenges getting this right. So I wanted to kind of go over the list, which I'll also put in the show notes and and the reasons why. And know that all those compostable plastics, those biodegradable plastics, those cannot go in the bin either. And the reason for it is they say is because it doesn't break down fast enough for them. But I would even question the materials. I would really wonder what those materials are. You know, if you put those those type of compostables in your recycling bin, that's also an issue because they're not recyclable. They're supposed to break down. So they really end up in the actual trash bin and should go in the actual trash bin because it ends up ruining the recyclables and now hopefully, hopefully not ruining the green bin food scrap waste that we can compost. So that's going to be a big deal. So what can go in my bin? Well, fruits and vegetables, that's an easy one. They're saying dairy and eggshells. Dairy is also one that breaks down a little, it takes a little bit longer. So again, I think that should have been a little bit later that it's introduced, but off it goes. Bread, cereal, grains, rice, pasta, beans. And then here we go with the meat, bone, fish, and shells. And, you know, what are we talking with meat? Are we talking carcasses? Are someone going to put that whole thing in? That takes a long time to break down. So you might want to cut it up. I didn't see details on that necessarily. And so what I get a little bit concerned about when it comes to meat, you definitely are not supposed to put meat in your backyard compost or dairy because it just doesn't get hot enough. So with a commercial facility, you know, they can get those, those, uh, the heat up higher to really break that down. Although with the warm summers we're having, who knows, but no, really not supposed to put any kind of meat or dairy into your compost, your home compost. 
But my concern is when meat decomposes, it can become infected with bacteria and not the good bacteria. So, you know, I just get worried about contaminating the whole compost pile or the whole truck and and the risk of really transferring that bacteria to the soil or the surrounding plants. So if you are in question about what to put in your green bin, I would suggest not putting it in there. Anything in question, even if it's your recyclables as well, the blue bin. If it's in question, just put it in the trash. And I know it's hard to do. I sometimes don't want to do it myself, but it's better to not take a guess on this because then you really contaminate everything. And with recyclables, okay, if you contaminate the recyclables, it ends up going in the trash. If you contaminate the green bin and maybe it's not caught and it goes ends up being composted and goes into our soil, this ends up being the food that we eat. So we really want to be mindful of what's going in to that green bin. Okay, so coffee grounds, filters, those can go in the green bin. I also put my coffee grounds on uh, in my yard. Rose bushes love them, and I sprinkle that. You can also use your coffee grounds as a exfoliator. It's a great exfoliator on your skin, but it can go in your green bin, so that's nice too. And then food soiled paper products. So some people think that they can recycle their pizza box. And the answer is no, cannot go in the blue bin because of that grease or that cheese left over. Uh, and it, once, once it's contaminated with food, it cannot be recycled. But it now can go in your green bin. That's exciting. So the pizza box into the green bin it goes and it can be composted. And then, of course, your yard waste, your flowers. And here's another one that's you know, left to interpret is clean, untreated wood. Okay, so if it's wood in your backyard from trees, sure, can go in the compost. What I get a little nervous of is these, the untreated wood because will you know if it's untreated or will you be guessing? If you're getting, I don't know, you're throwing out a product that's a wood product from Ikea, chances are it's been treated and you don't want that going into your green bin because again, that's going to go into the soil, into the soil that grows your food. So the other thing that I think about is the types of foods that you're putting into the green bin. I know not everybody eats organic. And so those pesticide and herbicide filled food, leftover foods, scraps that you put in your green bin are now being put in the soil. Although I suppose that this compost is going to industrial farmers anyway, which is already using heavy amounts of pesticide and herbicide. So follows the same same path, I suppose, but just something to think about. And then of course, with your meats and dairies, if it's not organic, then it's going into the soil. But again, I guess this is for industrial farmers on a large scale. So I would rather have all this material be composted than end up in the landfill for sure. So some of the products that you cannot, cannot put in the green bin. So we talked about the plastics, a big no. And then products labeled biodegradable or compostable are no. So I think that's a good one because that just really leaves a lot for question. And I just think they're not breaking down quick enough along with the actual materials that are used to make up these products are could be in question. So no to the biodegradable, no to the compostable. Glass, no way. You can't put glass in the green bin. Produce stickers, that's a big one. So you've got to take those stickers off. And even I I had purchased a pineapple and the pineapple had one a, a tag on it with, with those little plastic things. Really a bummer and not easy to get off. I had to like, you know, use a scissors and really try and pull it off and make sure it was not attached still. So it wasn't easy to do, but you definitely don't want those little bits going into the green bin. Rubber bands are a no. Twisty ties, no. Plastics, waxes, coatings, no. And a big one, pet waste. I think people think you can put your pet waste into the green bin and I've seen it in the green bin. It's an absolute no. And pet litter as well. And so sometimes I open my green bin and there's a plastic bag of poop in my green bin. Do not put your pet waste into the green bin. It goes in the trash, in the trash. So I will list those all down below as well. And then some people question 
you know, if you're at home, so I, um, what I use right now for my scraps is I just have a to-go container. It's, you know, aluminum container open top that I was just collecting it. And the day of collection, and my collection comes a little bit later, I just take it out and dump it in. So with the food waste pail, it has a lid. So we'll try that and see how that goes. But sometimes like if you're actually going to put meat or dairy, you know, that could get a little smelly. It could create a, you know, a lot of bacteria if you just put it out into your green bin right away and maybe you have a week left till they come pick it up. I would wait. I know not everybody wants to hold on to that. Um, some people put it in their fridge or freezer and then bring it out closer to the day of collection. I would definitely advise that just for sanitary reasons, for smell. And um, if you wanted to put in your green bin, you know, you could line it with a paper towel. They also say you could put some little, sprinkle a little baking soda. So, you know, this aluminum container that I have, I mean, it gets a little, it gets a little funky after a while, right? Because the food scraps just sit out and they start to decompose a little bit. So it might get a little juicy, might get a little moldy. But if you have this pail that you can get, has a lid on it, and I think it could be very helpful for everybody. And it's washable. I mean, they say it's dishwasher safe, but I would not put it in my dishwasher. I just take it outside and try to hose it down a little bit. And then, of course, you put your yard trimmings in your green bin and then my landscaper comes every two weeks. So even if your bin is not full, I would definitely take your green bin out to make sure that what you put in there is taken away and doesn't sit there for a whole nother week. And so another thing you could do, sometimes I collect leaves, I put it in, I put my food scraps on top, and then I put some more leaves just to kind of mix it up a little bit. And then of course, if there's already yard waste in there, that's really easy to just dump it on top. But it's very exciting. And I just really love when things don't go to waste. And it's actually a benefit to be putting in the green bin, to be able to be composted and actually be helpful to our farmers and our soil because the soil really needs all the nutrients of everything that breaks down that we will be throwing away. So that's pretty exciting. And of course, if you do a backyard compost, you know, keep on, keep on keeping on, you can do that. And you can actually take it to LA Compost or obviously use it yourself in your own yard. Um, but this is something that's going to be exciting for everybody. But it is going to be a learning curve, um, especially if you've just never done it before. So I will add all this information to my show notes. And there is a phone number. So it says it's a 24-hour customer care center. I didn't call off hours, so I wasn't sure if it's a recording, but somebody did answer during the day. I didn't have to wait. So... <laughs> It's not like calling the housing authority, which is an hour and a half wait, at least. Uh, so this was somebody that was able to answer questions and was very helpful. So I'll put that number down, as well as the website uh, to get your your food scrap pail. And really, the resources are right there at your fingertips. They make it really easy. And I really want to thank Organics LA and LA Sanitation and Environment. and. Uh, having this bill, you know, I'm, I'm not always big on mandates. I really do question them a lot of times, but in an, I don't think we could get enough people to just do this by choice to put these food scraps, which can be a benefit to us of having less waste in our landfills while also helping farmers and help hopefully regenerate our soil. And so uh, for now, I'm for it until we see something different. But I am concerned about the meat. I did want to mention that again. And so again, I will just reiterate, if you are in question about what to put in that green bin, then just don't do it yet. Let's start off small. Let's take baby steps. And as you get more comfortable doing it, then you can add more items to that list. So I thank you for listening. This is SB, Senate Bill 1383 a statewide effort to reduce emissions by being able to compost our food scraps and put them in the green bin all over the state. So if you're not in Los Angeles County, which I'm speaking of, definitely look into your county and what's available. Those food pails should be available while supplies last. So I would actually get one now while you can. It was really easy. I put in my zip code. The facility was about 20 minutes away. I went in non-traffic hours. I picked up the pail right away and I was on my way. So, and if you have a, 
a parent or somebody, you can pick it up for them, just input their address as well. And then you could kind of just do both at once. And it's while supplies last. So I would definitely get one now uh, while you can and while it's easy to get. So if you have any other questions you'd like to shoot me, uh, you can always send me uh, a note on my website, greenwithtiffany.com or on Instagram at greenwithtiffany. You can send me a message and I'd be happy to get you any information that you might want about this. So I thank you for listening. I'm excited about our curbside organics recycling program. It is definitely needed and I hope you will be able to join easily and recover all the food scraps that we can. Thank you so much for listening and we'll see you next time. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed the show. Please rate, review, subscribe, and share on Apple Podcasts. It would mean the world to me. You can find me at greenwithtiffany.com and on Instagram. Till next time, choose to care.